What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Trail Talk, episode three in the challenge series. Today we're putting an ATV, a side-by-side, -side, and a forerunner through our trail riding circuit. Let's go. Welcome back to another episode of Trail Talk. Episode number three, Eric. We've been doing this challenge series, right? Informal demonstrations, right, Eric? Yeah. It's and it's episode three. The whole series has been about, hey, if, if I have this vehicle, my friend has a different one, or my buddy has a different one, can we all ride together? Like, do we have the capabilities to ride together? Um, or if I don't have any of these vehicles, but I'm pretty stoked on this off-road thing, which thing do I get? We've just been showing in this series what the pros and cons are. We've done a speed and braking challenge, Eric. Yeah. That was episode one. It was good. We've done a rock crawling and clearance challenge. That was episode two. So if you're like, what's all this talk about? Go watch the other episodes. This challenge is the trail riding circuit challenge, Eric. We have put together a little circuit. Today's challenge is basically to mimic, you know, sort of like if we were trail riding, how, what are the times, and this isn't a race, by the way, yeah. this is much more so just like at normal trail riding speeds, comfortable on an ATV or one of the other vehicles, how are these vehicles kind of stacking up? So if you're thinking to yourself, hey, that sounds like a pretty big gray area as far as how the the challenges go, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Nothing about this is scientific, Eric. Nothing about this is official. Nothing about this is the right answer. We're just here to have fun, right? So don't go crazy in the comments, but feel free to. We're not gonna stop anyone. <laughs> uh, this is more so just a demo, right? And we really wanna see like, how can an ATV, can it keep up with a side-by-side? -side? Can it keep up with a forerunner? Like, what does it all add up to, you know? So. We're here for the challenge. What we're going to do, Eric, is we're actually going to drive the course. Okay. Sort of slow. We're not gonna like peter through the whole thing and show it, but we're gonna show kind of the different course. We're gonna get some times, and then we're gonna talk about why maybe certain things happened the way they did. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let's go take a look at the trail riding circuit. Come on. We're going to drive the course really quickly. Okay. Why are we in the forerunner? Well, it has air conditioning. That's exactly so that's, why. I like that. If you look up there, that's where we were, yeah. the ATV. That is your position. So you're going to be up there. Do you see this uh, arch here? Yes. This is the starting point. Okay. Inside this arch is exactly where we're going to start. Got it. We are going to make two big like loops, one on each side of this field. We're now going to view the rest of the course from the top of this. We're not gonna drive it. There's too much time, Eric. It's too much time. You never come up here in this guy. Vision, horrible, by the way. Just steer straight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, boom, okay. Note the vision. <laughs> sky. <laughs> so the rest of the course will be, if you look forward, as much as I know you want to look at me currently, <laughs> we will go c continuing straight yes. through that tunnel. You'll take a right and you'll curly cue up and over that arch. Are you also following? So you'll curly cue around yep, yep. up and over this arch. We'll come around to the left. Do you see in front of the teeter-totters there's like rocks over there? Yeah, the grass there. That is a very smallish, but still oddly bumpy rock crawl. Sure. You will have a troubles seeing that from your vantage point, but that is the last obstacle before going through the tunnel, okay. which was the starting point. Yeah. So that's lap number one. Got it. So you start in that tunnel, you do a loop down the left, and you come back and do some curly cues and go through the tunnel again. Yep. End of loop one. You go back down the gravel and do a loop to the right and then come back through for a final time. Okay. Clear as mud. Clear, clear as mud. Let's get the GoPros out. <laughs> Let's get the GoPros. The producer is going to time these laps. Again, not a race. We're going to be going normal trail speeds 
from my perspective. Got it. Lots of gray area. Super gray. We know. But fun. Yes. What is your prediction? Uh, well, you know the general's been a <laughs> thing's just been cleaning house. Oh my gosh. So I think general. Yep. ATV. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, forerunner. Yeah. So I gotta agree with that. Um, we've already seen how much faster a, a, a off-road designed power sports vehicle can approach certain things. Right. And I think that will be even more amplified here. Sure, sure. You know, let's do ATV. Okay. Forerunner. Yeah, yeah. Side by side. I like that. Okay, let's go. High gear, performance, all wheel drive. Three, two, one, let's go. was very fun. It looked fun. <laughs> that little bumpity bump over there, pretty cool. Two minutes. Okay. Two seconds. 202. And we're gonna see, someone's gonna, I don't know, is someone gonna like be time checking our producer and doing the math themselves? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all for fun. Two minutes, two seconds, you are absolutely right. Ultimately everyone, the times don't matter. It's all for fun. Forerunner next, right Eric? Yes. Let's do the forerunner. I'm in four-wheel drive, I'm back to high gear, or okay. uh, sorry, just not low gear four-wheel drive, sure. regular gear. Um, traction control is off. None of the, we didn't even use the diff lock last episode. No. We didn't use a track, we didn't use any of that. It just nope. went right through. Street mode. None of that is on here either. We have our deflated tires, Yeah. 18 PSI, if you recall. That's right, yep. Um, and then as a reminder also, we're trying to say this every episode, this is not a stock 4Runner. It's modified, it's lifted a bunch. It's yours. It's mine. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should I get in position? Yeah, you ready? Ahead. Yeah, I'll it. get in my spot. Three, two, one, go. So again, <clears throat> not a race. I'm not absolutely mobbing my 4Runner. I'm driving at trail speeds if I was on these trails. The deflated tires feel super nice, actually. <laughs> okay, and again, not going to be hitting this crazy corner. I don't know if you can see how banked that thing is on these cameras, but cutting it short, 
Eric's probably getting this. Now we're back on trail. All right, let's keep going. Briskly coming through. This actually feels really nice in here. Oh, oh, okay. Right up and over, straight down. <laughs> this is so different in a large vehicle, Eric. <laughs> First arch, if you'll recall, it is not easy to see. So I am trying to just not turn. Yep, yep. Okay, and we're back, and we're back. Let's go. The camera might be able to, ah, the camera's at about my height. I don't think it's picking up too much more than I can see. First turn through the curly cue. I'm gonna take this a little wider because I do have to get in line for this again. We're still moving. This is smooth, this is smooth. I'm trying to now stay even again. Yep, okay, okay. All right, now the rock section. Taking our left-hand turn. This is not something I wanna smash through, but we are gonna slowly roll, We're rolling. Oh, beautiful. Through the arch, loop one, done, okay. Second loop is the fast loop, and I'm actually going to be hitting the banked corner. This is kind of like a fire road almost, like we're currently on, like a forest service road. Slowing down, taking a right here, and sticking to the right for the banked corner. Bopping right through, this is super banked. <laughs> right through, here we go, here we go. Faster section. I know it's a little smoother, so I'm picking up the speed. We are blazing through. Cutting it down a little, cutting it down a little. I got a turn, final turn, a little bump on the road. There is like a little whoop up, oop, and down. Oh, come on, Ooh. and through, through. We did it. It looks smooth. Felt honestly quite, I'm guessing that was slower, but it felt smooth, but probably because it was slower. First time, Eric was 202. Do you have any guesses? Uh, 240. Oh, 234. Oh, wow, nice. 234 in this bad beast. Last vehicle. Oh my gosh, Eric. <laughs> yeah, general. Something I've heard, I can't remember the exact like ratio of this, but the Rubicon Trail like the difference between a Jeep or a Toyota or whatever, like doing the Rubicon, that you'd need like a really built Jeep for or something crazy. Um, I'm pretty sure a side-by-side -side can like go there and back in the time that like a Jeep can like go one way. Really? Yeah, it's, it's something like that. Don't quote me. Okay. I remember hearing that from someone, um, but I think we're gonna get a little sample. Obviously this is, not, I'm not saying this is the Rubicon. Yeah, There's yeah. no crazy obstacles, but this is a little bit more traily, corners, high speed, whatever. We, again, we thought this one was gonna be the best, the I most think you efficient. Said this most was efficient. gonna mop the other ones yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's... All right, let's get this started. General taking off in three, two, one, go. Again. Number two. 
that's what I would call fun trail riding speeds. Eric. Where were we at with the other ones? A little recap, I don't remember. ATV, 202, Forerunner, what was it? 248, 2, 240? 232, 232? I think. 232? <laughs> Still don't know. Um, I guess 240. Oh, I said 148, or I said 248, because this was 148. This is 148? Yeah, I messed it up in my head. 148, I believe, on the general. So we are in the realm of half the time, yeah. not quite, you know? Again, on all these machines, if you're watching this and you're like, ah, like, I could have gone faster in all of them. I could have gone slower in all of them. I'm just trying to depict trail riding speeds. Right. We want everyone to ride within their ability. Uh, this is an informal demonstration. We're here. We are here. At the end of the trail riding episode. Uh, there's still another episode, by the way. Yep. This isn't done yet. Um, so the side-by-side -side was the quickest time. The ATV was the next quickest time. And the Forerunner, or the large vehicle, was the least quickest time. But I think, I don't think this should surprise too many people who actually go out and ride a larger vehicle. Like I have a buddy, uh, a couple buddies who have Jeeps, um, some other friends who overland in different vehicles, and the intent is to never go trail ride. Yeah. at speed right. it's always like let's go explore some cool trails maybe they're camping you know maybe it's like hey let's find some fun little features let's ex you know exploratory like no one is sending it in there <laughs> you know there's certainly some videos where you see you see some jeeps do that or some built vehicles but by and large i think if you are using a large vehicle like this i'm not thinking your goal is let's go shred the trails because the drivetrains they're made for going on road, Eric. Yeah. So it's like, it's, yeah. I can add suspension, which I have. I can change all the arms. I can add cool sliders and tires and like, there's a new radiator in this. There's a ton of stuff that's performance oriented, but the core of the drivetrain, like the axles and the diffs and all that stuff, transfer case, all that, they are built to an on road spec. So like, I personally don't want to go mash on this thing like I more so want to where I can trust that I know that these are going to be more built for it because they literally are built for it. I'm not supposed to drive this home at the end of the day. I'm supposed to drive this home at the end of the day. <laughs> so you treat them differently. And if you have, you know, a Jeep or a Forerunner that's like an older Gen, oh my gosh, Gen 3 Forerunners are... Phew, hold me back here. <laughs> if you build out one of those as more of a crawler or a bouncer, even still, you're not, you know, flying through the trails. You're more so like enjoying bigger rock obstacles yeah. is, you know, my rookie impression, if you'll allow that. Sense. I'm by no means am I a rock crawler or bouncer. Um, so yeah, lots of differences here. Also, a very interesting, like big vehicle, cost the most, cost the most to make more capable. Once again, these are stock vehicles. You know, they are cool additions. This is the ultimate trail edition, has the cool tires, all that. This is also a, you know, limited edition, but ultimately the performance capabilities are the same as any stock vehicle you could get from Power Sports, right, Eric? Yes. Um, it's off the showroom floor, really. This one is also different as, you know, we always say, ATVs are an active riding experience. So again, it was even just interesting, like it's, there's such a joy to being on an ATV and leaning in the corners and like really feeling just the vehicle kind of move under you almost. Like it's more like, feels like when I go mountain biking, Eric. Yeah. You mountain bike. Yep. Like you dirt bike. There's a, just a different, ex such a different experience being on something like this and also not having a roof and a steering wheel and all that type of stuff. You have bars, you have different things. Very different, totally a purpose for this. Like I totally understand people who are like, I'm never buying a side-by-side -side <laughs> and I'm never buying whatever because I love my ATV. I totally get that. Um, but it is hard to disagree that this vehicle just, and imagine if we had a Razor here. Right. Imagine if this was a Turbo S or a Pro XP, like it would just, 
it would just be even more leaning into the corner, or not leaning into the corners, but like really pushing into the corners, you know, being less worried about different things, just floating over the rocks. Um, those are the differences, totally just different vehicles. All of these things in their own way is just so cool, obviously. Two of them built for the off-road. Like, I think I said it in the last episode, Eric, the more off-roading I do, and I've explored a lot in my Forerunner. The more off-roading I do, the more I wanna kind of tow with this guy <laughs> and then take the general out on the trail or take an ATV like out on the trail right. and you know, save this for, you know, throw the rooftop tent up there, go hit a state park, go overlanding in it. Once again, there's no right answers. Just go outside, go ride, right? There's nothing official about this. This wasn't buy this certain thing. This was pros and cons, of course. Um, listen, as cool as these vehicles are, they are absolutely not cool if you buy it just to look cool and then you never go ride it. So please go ride your machines and come on back for the next episode of Trail Talk, the last episode in this little mini challenge series. See you next time.